this lesson, I'm teacher Agnes and today we are going to be discussing about mass, weight and density. So mass, we have already discussed about mass in physics, but what does mass refer to? If you hold this book, you can feel how heavy it is. So how heavy an object is, is what we refer to as mass. But the scientific definition of mass is the quantity of matter in an object. So if you hold this book and hold this marker pen, you realize that the book is heavier than the pen. That means that the quantity of matter making up the book is more than the one making up the pen. So the more the matter, the heavier an object is. So when we talk about mass, mass can be measured. Okay, mass can be measured, and the most commonly used unit of measuring mass is kilograms. So kilograms is the SI unit of mass, and it is denoted by small k and small g kilograms. But this is not the only mass, this is not the only unit that you use to express mass. There are other units. One of the units that is bigger than kilograms is tons. So you use tons when describing very heavy uh, substances. For instance, you know about the trailers that transport goods from one town to the other, or even in the ships from one place to the other. So you realize that if you are carrying stones, for instance, using a lorry, the heaviness of the stones in the lorry is going to be so much such that if you express it in kilograms you're going to have a very big number so tons is used to express the mass of quantities that are very heavy which makes sense to describe the amount or rather the mass of substances that are that are carried by big vehicles in tons than in kilograms. Now we're going to discuss about how the two units are related, but I want us to highlight all the units that we use. Now kilograms is a standard one, so we have a smaller or rather a unit that is used to describe smaller masses. For instance, if you weigh this pen, it may not get to one kilogram. So for units that are less, or rather for masses that are less than one kilogram can be expressed in units known as grams. Okay, noted with small g. And then finally, the other unit that we use is milligrams. So milligrams uh, is used to measure quantities that are very small. For instance, uh, tablets of medicine, um, you know, very small quantities. And this is written as small m, small g. So how are the three, or how are the four units related? If we write them in order, we say that tons is the largest. So here we have tons, next we have kilograms, then we have grams, and then we have milligrams. So the difference between any two of these units is a thousand units. Between any two, a thousand units. So tons, kilograms, grams, then milligrams. So if you want to compare, for instance, between tons and kilograms, we have a thousand units, meaning that one ton is equivalent to a thousand kilograms. If you want to determine how many grams make up one ton, you will take, so between tons and grams, we have 1,000 times 1,000. So one ton will be equal to a million, a million grams. Same case applies to a comparison between tons and milligrams. So from tons to milligrams, we have 1,000 times 1,000 times 1,000. So one ton is equal to 1 billion milligrams okay so anytime you want to convert between any two units 
just create this and then use the thousands between any two units to come up with the formula that you need. So kilograms compared to, to, to grams, one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. Then kilograms to milligrams, one kilogram is equal to a thousand times one thousand, which is one million milligrams. And then finally, if you compare between grams and milligrams, you find that one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams, okay? So anytime you want to convert, just highlight starting with tons all the way to milligrams. You need to remember that you have a thousand units between any two, uh, a thousand yeah, units between any two uh, units and then you can always develop your own list. So now, let us do a few conversion questions. So learners, now we are going to do some conversions. Make sure that you can see the, you know, the relationships that we have derived are between any two units. So in the first one, we are going to convert 0 0.04 kilograms to milligrams. So you need to ask yourself, between kilograms and milligrams, which one is greater than the other? So one kilogram is greater than one milligram. So you're going to start with one kilogram. And one kilogram has how many milligrams? So it has a million, a million milligrams. So what about the given 0 0.04 kilograms? So what do we do with this? We now cross multiply. So 0 0.04 is being multiplied by 1 million. And this will be equal to, since we have two decimal places, we move the decimal point forward twice and cancel two zeros. So now we have 4 times 10,000, which makes 40,000 um, milligrams. So 0 0.04 kilograms is equal to 40,000 milligrams. Next, we are converting between grams and kilograms. So you need to ask yourself the same question. Which one is greater between a gram and a kilogram? Now a kilogram is greater. So one kilogram is equal to how many grams? A thousand grams. But the question has given us 24 thousand grams so you must make sure that the grams are on one side just like in this case we had kilograms on the same side so how many kilograms are these so of course we cross multiply one times twenty four thousand and then you divide by a thousand so the three zeros cancel out and you will have twenty four kilograms so 24,000 grams is equal to 24 kilograms. Next, we are going to convert between tons and kilograms. Which one is greater? One ton is greater than one kilogram. So we start with one ton is equal to 1,000 kilograms. So how many kilograms are there in 8,000 tons? So we cross multiply, so it will be 8,000 times 10,000. So 8,000 times 1,000, which is equal to 8 million. 8 million what? We were converting to kilograms, so 8 million kilograms. Then again, we are converting between kilograms and tons. One ton is equal to 1,000 kilograms. But now we have 86,000 kilograms. So how do we determine the number of tons that we have? We cross multiply. So 1 times 86,000. Then we divide by we divide by 1,000. The three zeros will cancel out and then we will be left with uh, 86 tons. 
So that is how you convert between any two units of mass. We just need to recall the relationship between the two units. So now next, we are going to look at weight. Now here's an interesting fact. Your mass right now, if you have a mass of 50 kilograms, if you were to use one of those Elon Musk's, you know, uh, rockets and ships that are going to Mars, and you land on planet Mars, your mass would still be 50 kilograms. If you go to Jupiter, your mass will still be 50 kilograms. However, your weight will be different. Your weight here on Earth and your weight on Jupiter would have a very big difference. So what causes the difference in the weight? We know that weight is very related to mass. Both of them are used to measure how heavy or to describe how heavy an object is. Weight is influenced by something we call gravity. So we know that it is the pull of gravity that maintains us on the surface of the earth. That's why we are not able to float. But I know you have heard that when astronauts go to the moon, they can float. So why the difference? The difference is in the pull of gravity in the moon, which is less than the pull of gravity on Earth. Now the pull of gravity on Jupiter is the highest. Therefore, if you go to Jupiter, you will have the highest weight you can have when compared to the weight in all the other planets. So weight is related to mass, but it is also influenced by the gravitational pull of a place. So weight is equal to mass times the gravitational pull of a place or a planet. So let us use an example of Earth. Now the gravitational pull of a planet is a constant. The gravitational pull on Earth is considered to be 10 newtons per kilogram. So the units for gravitational pull is newtons per kilogram. So if we write this formula using uh, symbols, it becomes weight is equal to mass times gravitational uh, force. The units of weight are newtons, denoted by capital N. The units of mass are uh, kilograms, denoted by small k, small g. Then the units of gravitational pull are newtons per kilogram. And this is denoted by Newton per. So capital M stroke uh, KG. So always remember, based on what the question is asking you to calculate, ensure that you give the accurate units. So let us do an example. So like we have said, the gravitational pull does not change in any one planet. The gravitational pull of Earth is approximated to be 10 newtons per kilogram. Tomorrow it's going to be the same. So tomorrow it's not going to be 20. It's going to remain as 20, as, as 10. However, different planets have different values for the gravitational pull. So let's use an example of where you weigh a mass of, or where you have a mass of 50 kilograms, and you are on Earth, so the gravitational pull is 10 newtons per kilogram. If we want to determine your weight, then we will have to use the formula mass times gravitational pull. Your mass is 50 and the gravitational pull is 10. So if you multiply 50 by 10, you obtain 500. The units of weight are newtons, okay? So 500 newtons would be your weight on Earth if your mass is 50 kilograms. What if you are on the moon? Now on the moon, the gravitational pull is said to be equal to, uh, approximately equal to 1.7 newtons per kilogram. So 
If you wanted to determine how much you weigh on the moon, then your weight would be equal to, so weight would be equal to 50 times 1.7. And this would be equal to 85 newtons. Now look at this. We are talking about the same person. A person who has a mass of 50 uh, kilograms. But since the gravitational pulls of the two places are different, then the weights are different. So we say that the weight of an object or a person changes from place to place. Now the difference here is quite high. So on the moon, you would weigh a weight of 85 newtons. This is why it is easy to float on the moon because your weight is less. But on Earth, the weight of this person would be 500 newtons, which is a lot, and they cannot float. The gravitational pull will keep them on the surface of the Earth. But since here the gravitational pull is so low, then you are able to float. So that is how astronauts are able to float on the surface of the moon. So this formula can be used based on what is given. So I want us to come up with a triangle that connects the three, uh, the three quantities, weight, mass, and gravitational pull. So if we draw that triangle, so if you want weight, weight is equal to mass times gravitational pull. So weight is mass times, so this is usually times, this is division, this is division. So weight is equal to mass times gravitational pull. Mass is equal to weight over grams, over uh, gravitational pull. Then gravitational pull is equal to weight over mass. So based on what the question is asking, you can always use this formula to calculate any of these three quantities. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. So here we have the weight as 1,000 newtons, and we have the gravitational, not the gravitational pull, but we have the mass as 100 kilograms. So what would be the gravitational pull of this place. So this is a person who has a mass of 100 kilograms and their weight is 1,000 newtons. So in the place where they are, what is the value of the gravitational force? So from this triangle, we can see that gravitational force is equal to weight of a mass. So G will be equal to weight of a mass. Our weight is 1,000 newtons of our mass, which is 100. The two zeros will cancel, and this will be equal to 10. We are looking for gravitational force, which has the unit newtons per kilogram. So newton per kilogram, okay? So that is how you use the triangle to determine any of the three quantities using the other two quantities. So now we can clearly see that mass is related to weight. But they are not the same thing. So you cannot say that you weigh 40 kilograms. When you talk about weighing 40 kilograms, that would be a misrepresentation. So if it's about weight, then you weigh, if your mass is 40 kilograms, then you need to multiply 40 by 10, so that now you can say that you weigh 400 newtons. So do not use the two interchangeably. Inter Each one of them means something that is different. However, they are very related. So now we are going to look at density. How is density related to mass? So density is also very related to mass because without the mass of a substance, we cannot determine the density of that substance. So when we talk about density, we are talking about the ratio between the mass of the substance to the volume of that substance. This marker pen is occupying its own space. That is the volume of this marker pen, and it has its own mass. 
So if you divide the mass of this marker pen by its volume, then you will obtain its density, okay? So we can say, or we can define density as mass per unit volume. Mass per unit volume. Now this can be translated into a formula that density is equal to mass over volume. Okay? Because the word per means that you divide. Now what are the units of density? What are the units of mass and volume? Now since we have covered the units of mass before, I know you know them. In fact, we have covered the SI unit of mass in this uh, lesson, which is kilogram. And then for volume, the SI unit is meters cubed. So if you have kilograms here, divided by meters cubed, then we can say that the unit of density is kilogram per meters cubed. So for density, the symbol for the unit of density is kilogram per meters cubed. So anytime when you do your calculation, ensure that you use the correct units. Now, however, mass can also be measured using grams. And volume can also be measured using centimeters cubed. So if you have grams here over centimeters cubed, then we can say that the other unit for density is grams per centimeters cubed. So how are the two units related? Should you need to convert between the two units? How are they related? So we say that one gram per centimeter cubed is equal to a thousand kilogram per meter cubed. So anytime you want to convert between grams per centimeter cubed and kilogram per meter cubed, this is the relationship that you use. Now you need to know that different substances have different densities. The density of water is different from the density of milk. It is different from the density of kerosene. Now the higher the density, for instance, if you mix water and kerosene, they do not mix. If you put them in the same container, they will not mix. What will happen? which one will settle on top of the other. Kerosene will settle above the water. So if this is a container, if this is a container and you have two liquids, okay, no matter the amount, if you have two liquids and your liquids are water and kerosene, then water is going to be the one at the bottom. And then at the top, we will have kerosene. So why does this happen? How would you say the density of kerosene compares to that of water? The density of kerosene is less than that of water. And that is why kerosene settles on top of the water. The kerosene floats on the water. So the actual density of kerosene is 800 kilogram per meter cubed. And the density of water is 1,000 kilogram per meter cubed. So you realize that water is denser. We say that water is denser because it has a larger or a greater density, all right? So one of the reasons why like plastics float on water is because of density. They have less density than that of water. But items like steel, they sink in water because they have a greater density than water. So now we're going to look at how do we convert how do we convert between grams per centimeter cubed and the kilogram per meter cubed? So now, learners, we're going to convert um, these three scenarios. So here, we need to remember the relationship between grams per centimeter cubed and kilogram per meter cubed. So this is how they relate. One gram per centimeter cubed is equal to a thousand kilogram per meter cubed. In the question, we have been provided with grams per centimeter cubed. So we write on this side 0 0.8 grams per centimeter cubed. So we need to find out how many kilograms per meter cubed 
are in these grams per centimeters cube. So we cross multiply 0 0.8 times 1000, which will be equal to 800. We were looking for kilogram per meters cubed. Okay, 800 kilograms per meters cubed. This is actually the density of kerosene. So in grams per centimeters cubed, it's 0 0.8. Then we need to convert 1300 kilogram per meter cubed to grams per centimeter cubed. So we know that one gram per centimeter cubed is equal to 1000 kilogram per meter cubed. So what about 1300 kilogram per meter cubed? We cross multiply so that this is now 1 times 1300 and then we divide by 1000. So we cancel out and this will be equal to 1.3 grams per centimeter cubed. And then finally we are going to convert uh, 13,600 kilograms per meter cubed to grams per centimeter cubed. So 1 gram per centimeter cubed is equal to 1000 kilogram per meter cubed. What about 13,600 kilogram per meter cubed. So we cross multiply again, one times 13,600, all that over 1,000. So the two zeros will cancel out, then we have one decimal point because we're dividing by 10. And this will be equal to 13.6 grams per centimeter cubed. And this is actually the density of mercury. So I think you have heard that mercury could be the heaviest liquid that we have. So if you were to put mercury and water in the same container, then water would be on the top because water is now um, less dense because it has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed, while mercury has a density of 13.6 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, in the introduction of density, we said that density is given by mass over volume. So now we are going to look at questions where we can be required to uh, use that formula. Now we are going to attempt these questions on density or on the relationship between density, mass, and volume. So when we were introducing density, we say that density is given by the formula mass divided by volume. Now, as always, we can create a triangle that has density, mass, and volume. So, if we create this triangle like that, so density is equal to mass over volume. So, mass is being divided by volume to give you density. That means that mass must be at the top. So, here we have mass and then volume and then density will be here so remember density is not represented by d it is represented by a greek letter that is called rho i know that we have done this in physics rho so if you want to calculate density density is mass over volume if you want volume if you want volume it's mass over density if you want mass, it's density times volume. So you can always create this triangle so it is easy for you to remember the formula. So now, looking at question one, we are required to determine the density of a substance whose 50 grams occupies a volume of 25 centimeters cubed. So let us start by identifying what the question has given us. So 50 grams represents the mass. So mass is 50 grams. Then the volume is 25 centimeters cubed. And then what is the question asking for? The question is asking for density. And we know that density is equal to mass over volume. So this will be equal to 50 grams over 25 centimeters cubed. Now what is 50 divided by 25? 
50 divided by 25 is 2. Then the unit will be grams per centimeters cubed. So 2 grams per centimeters cubed. So even if you have forgotten the units of density, if you substitute in your formula with the units of mass and the units of volume, it should be easy for you to derive the units of density by dividing grams by centimeters cubed, which will give you grams per centimeters cubed. Now in question number two, we have been given the density of kerosene. So here we have density as 0 0.8 grams per centimeters cubed. We are required to calculate the mass of kerosene that has a volume of 50 centimeters cubed. So the volume is 50 centimeters cubed. And what are we calculating? Mass. So mass is equal to, according to our triangle here, mass will be equal to density times volume. Mass will be equal to density times volume. Now the density is 0 0.8 grams per centimeters cubed times the volume which is 50 centimeters cubed. So you see that the centimeters cubed can cancel so that you are able to obtain the unit of mass as grams which is the only unit which is remaining. So now we have 0 0.8 multiplied by 50 which is equal to 40 grams. So the mass of kerosene um, that has a volume of 50 centimeters cubed has that has a volume of 50 centimeters cubed is 40 grams. Then question number three, we are required to calculate the volume of water that has a mass, a mass of two kilograms. Now you realize we have only been given the mass. For us to calculate volume, volume is given by mass over density. So we will need density. So the density of water is expected to be common knowledge. And the density of water, you must always remember it, it's one gram per centimeter cubed. So even if it is not given in the question, you can always use one gram per centimeter cubed if the liquid you are dealing with is water. So now we can calculate our volume, which is equal to volume is mass over density. So the mass, oh, this uh, reminds me something. Now, since we are dealing with kilograms here, we cannot use the density that is in grams. We will need to use the density that is in kilograms per meter cubed so that the units are similar. So we already say that one gram per centimeter cubed is equal to a thousand kilogram per meter cubed. Remember? So the density that you are going to use is the one in kilogram per meter cubed because it will match with two kilograms. The other alternative is to express the two kilograms into grams by multiplied by a thousand so that we have 2,000 grams. So this mass can only work with this density because they both have grams. But this mass can only work with this density because they both have kilograms. Again, for volume, if you are using grams per centimeter cubed, then you will only use volume that is in centimeters cubed. If you are using volume that is in meters cubed, then use the density that has meters cubed. So always ensure that you are using units that are common. So which one do you want us to use? So you can choose any. Whichever you choose, you'll get the answer. Only that you'll get the answer in different units. So we can work with um, the one that has grams. So 2,000 grams and 1 gram per centimeter cubed. Because there isn't much that you're going to do since you're dividing by 1. So we have 2,000 grams over 1 gram per centimeter cubed. And this will be equal to 2,000. You are looking for volume. The grams cancel out and we have centimeters cubed. 
So the volume of water that has a mass of two kilograms is equal to 2,000 centimeters cubed. So that is how you work out questions that are about um, density, mass, and volume. So now I'm going to give you a few questions that you are going to use as a revision of what we have covered in this lesson. For your assignment, you will work out these four questions. Number one, convert 8,000 milligram, milligrams to kilograms. Convert 830 kilograms per meter cubed to grams per centimeter cubed. Calculate the weight of an object that has a mass of 75 kilograms and the value of the gravitational force is 1.67 newtons per kilograms. Then finally, calculate the volume of a substance whose mass is 5 kilograms and density is 1200 kilograms per meters cubed. So I have confidence in you that you're going to get all the four questions right. Thank you so much for being in this lesson. See you in the next lesson.